Welcome everyone and thank you for coming today. My name is Matt Ward and I'm a director of Uro Publications, the publisher of Lost Tablets, which is the book that today's event for the NGV Melbourne Design Week celebrates. I'm also one of the owners of Art, Architecture and Design Spe Specialist Bookseller Bookshop by Uro, which you can find just on the other side of all the chaos in the courtyard there, um, just on the other side of the square here at Collingwood Yards. Before we begin, I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners and sovereign custodians of the land on which Collingwood Yards is situated, the Wurundjeri people of the Woi Wurrung language group. I'd also like to extend my respect to their ancestors and all First Peoples and Elders, past, present and future. Um, a quick note as well that tonight, today's event is actually being live streamed too. You can see the cameras there. So if you're at the front of the stage, you're probably being captured, something to, to keep in mind. Um, the Lost Tablets are a series of works by Jan van Skyk that explore the geometric language of architecture through the medium of children's building blocks. We're lucky to have a couple of them here with us today, at the front of the stage here. Each tablet flickers with strange resonances that point to a shared but deeply subjective symbolism of building. Depending on who's doing the viewing, the tablet might look a bit like a mosque or a cathedral, a bit like a spaceship, or it might even be a combination of all three a kind of agnostic celestial hybrid. The Lost Tablets book extends this playful exploration into the medium of the written word, with a selection of interpretations of the works by contributors from a diverse array of backgrounds. For an architecture and design publisher such as ourselves, this blend of the visual and the verbal was inevitably going to be editorial catnip. But what I found especially charming about the book was the fact that Jan had clearly extended to the other contributors, an open invitation to play as well. The writing that resulted isn't conventional criticism, but intensely subjective interpretations that include everything from works of history and memoir to science fiction and concrete poetry. That yarn managed to convince 50 different contributors to join in this game is probably testament to the power of his own personal charm. Now, in honour of the release of the Lost Tablets limited box set, we're very lucky that Jan has managed to convince five of these writers to give a live reading today of each of their contributions to the book. They are Nikos Papastagiadis, Susan Cohn, Shona Stark, Ray Edgar and Rory Hyde. A couple of seats at the front here, guys, if you wanted to grab them. Nikos is Professor in Media and Communications, and Director of the Research Unit of the Public Cultures at the University of Melbourne. In 2020, he published two books, Museums of the Commons with Rutledge and On Art and Friendship with Surplus. Susan is an artist, jeweler, designer, curator and writer. She has a long-standing practice working across the art craft design divide, using a variety of media from jewelry to photography, video and performance. Shona is an artist, lecturer, and multidisciplinary designer, working conceptually in formats such as installation, video, or sound. Her artworks express duality, connection, disconnection, communication, miscommunication. Ray is a Melbourne-based freelance writer and editor. He writes regularly on art and design for the Age newspaper. And Rory is associate professor in architecture, curatorial design, and practice at the University of Melbourne and design advocate for the Mayor of London. A huge thank you to all of you for happily agreeing to keep playing here today. Um, our first speaker though today will actually be the charming author himself, Jan van Skyk. Jan is an, editor, is an architect, educator, designer and creative practice researcher based in Melbourne, Australia. Please join me in welcoming him to the mic. Thanks very Matt and hello everyone. The first slide will tell you that I'm Matt, but I'm not. Uh, and the second slide will tell you that I'm Jan. Thank you. It's very lovely to um, hear the works that I've made um, spoken about uh, through the words of others. So thank you for the words that you wrote, Matt, not only there, but in other little snippets that you've read around the traps. We are here today, of course, as Matt has said, to hear um, some of the words that were commissioned for um, this book. which you can also see in this box. The box contains 50 postcards. The dynamic side of each work is on the postcards and the flat side of each work is in the book to 
uh, accompany the writing. Before um, I hand you over to hear what we've actually come to hear, I'm going to read you some of my words, for better or for worse. And as this is a reading, I will read not all of it, but a few selected paragraphs from the introductory editorial piece of the book. Present a small plastic block measuring about one centimetre by three centimetres with three pairs of equally spaced dots protruding from its top designed to click into the tubes in the base of a similar piece. And you'll struggle to find a child or adult in the developed world who could not identify it as Lego, a toy that has been in production since 1934. The company produces 4,000 different pieces types in around 100 colours and even more obscure of them, even the, even the more obscure of them are identifiable as Lego through its method of connectability to other pieces. I'm skipping a few paragraphs now. In 2019, motivated by nostalgia for long lost childhood toys, Lego obviously, I brought a small bag of worn yellow blocks in Colac, a small town in Western Victoria. The bag made its way to my desk where its contents found themselves the subject of some absent-minded play while I sat on hold with the utility provider. I started to arrange the various blocks in rows connecting them as a sheet, enjoying the sensation of the blocks looking together, locking together as their nipples clicked into negative spaces, a fraction too small, designed to receive them with gentle force. Skipping forward again. In this first work that arose from the absent-minded doodling, later named Lost Habit High Aim, I recognised a quality that I've tried to express in the words above, but that can only be accurately be expressed by the object. The grammar of the language required to express the essence of the object exists only in the object itself. In my view, this is a rare and important quality and one worth pursuing. And because of that thing that I observed, I made another one and then another one. I've now to date made 98 of them, and two from the blue book, which is the next one, um, are here with us today. The authors in this book come from diverse fields, as Matt mentioned. They are economists, songwriters, comedians, artists, curators, architects, linguists, sex workers, journalists, historians, lawyers, writers, philosophers, designers, poets, jewelers, educators, cyberneticians, students, and therapists. Their take on the works are equally diverse, which points towards the open-ended nature of interpretation itself, a limitless ocean from which these lost tablets spring, which I'm in the process of creating while I write this last sentence of the opening essay to this book. Thank you. Nikos. Thank you very much, Jan. It's a real pleasure to be in your company and in your family's company. Um, a little while ago, actually a long time ago, I was in an artist's residency, writer's residency program, and an artist came into my um, studio and said, hmm, your space looks a bit clean. What do you do? And I said, I'm a writer. And she goes, oh. I'm always looking for writers to write on my art. I thought, I wouldn't do that, write on someone's art. Because it's the method that counts. And so when Jan proposes to write about his method and gives you a title and an image, that's all a writer needs, not the content, certainly not the surface. And this is what I did after Jan proposed that I write from his art. I can do that. <laughs> Every Vicky. I had, or maybe still have, an aunt called Every Vicky. We have never met. When I visited my father's village, she was not there. Her name means bearer of justice. My father's village was full of resistance fighters and communists. 
They suffered badly enough during the Second World War. But it was the blacklist, the stinging red peppers, the betrayals and the hell of the Civil War that most scorched them. During this bitter war, Evridiki fought with the partisans. She went to the mountains with a gun over her shoulder, and no one in my family knows what happened after that. Some of the fighters fled the bombs and napalm launched by the CIA-backed government forces. They headed to Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia, and many ended up in Tashkent. I think that Evridiki would have been lucky to end up there. Most of my other relatives who made it that far were rewarded with a Soviet education, and they became nurses and teachers. I have no doubt that Evridiki would have retrained and become an engineer. Half of my family are brilliant with numbers and their hands. I come from the other half, the one that talks too much and does little. From what I know about her early years, Evridiki believed in taking action and putting things back together. If something was broken or found in a state of ruin, she would go to another part of the village and see what was left hanging around that place. Sometimes she would immediately say, find something Im instantly in the hand as it would lean into a dark space. And there it was. Other times, the part that could connect with the others would hide itself. She could be in the middle of shoveling the mule's shit and it would suddenly wink at her. Every nail counts. Eventually the assemblage could come together. Tr the trick might not last long, but that was not the point. It only had to endure long enough to get you to the next point. And then there would be another solution that would avail itself, or at least you would not able to let it go. The lost tablet is a, is a testament to this skill for seeing connections. Call it improvisations, call it pattern recognition. In cultural anthropology, Levi Strauss celebrated the mindset he called the bricoleur. In my dreams, I have a garage with tools and lots of bits and bobs. In reality, I have a library and a chaotic desktop. Louis, a French peasant with whom I spent many summers helping him make the hay, called this kind of work monkey work. I guess the metaphor means chasing your own tail. My aunt Evridiki never struggled like this. For her, the next piece was there or else there was her abiding patience and confidence that would come in good time. Or as my father would say, in its own time. Evridiki was also was also Apollo's daughter. In the time of myths, she fled a suitor and stepped on a snake that killed her. Her beloved Orpheus was stricken with grief and sought to have her brought back from the dead. Hades was enchanted by the songs and granted Orpheus his wish on the condition that he did not turn and face her. Music can take you places, but it does not bring you back as you were before. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jan, for... Uh, letting me play with this and thank you to the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation for letting me hang out here and read today. Okay. The following transmission was hacked from www.sbnation.com backslash a 1776-football-chapter1. Names have been changed. Alut one, can you hear me? If you can, answer me. Who's this? Are you talking to me? Who is Alight one? I said, Alut one, not 
Alouette one. What? Hello? Are you still there? I don't know how I'm hearing you. Just tell me you can hear me. Alouette one. I am sorry. I can only transmit short messages. Listen carefully. You cannot transmit messages. More to follow. Who are you? Please answer me. Your name is Alute One. My name is Alouette Two. We're kind of related. Excuse me. I don't know how you're talking to me. Please tell me. Alouette Two. Are you there? I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Please answer. Alute One. I know this is difficult. It will take some patience. I don't know who you are. I have to talk to you. Please answer. Don't ghost me. Alute One. It's hard to explain. John Boris told me to contact you. Who? John Boris from SB Nation. He wrote the original script about American football. Oh, never mind. Take too long to explain. I only have a few words. Huh? What? Wait. Now I know you want to know why I'm talking to you. I want to help you. Help? How? Know what you are. Who am I? Now, what I'm about to ask you will not make any sense. But trust me, it will help you understand. How many lost tablets are in Melbourne, Australia? Fifty. I don't know how I knew that. How do I know about Melbourne? Melbourne is where you were made. Where? Huh? What? Who am I? A loot one. Who are you? Alouette two. A Canadian Earth satellite. What am I? How about you take a look? You've got a camera. I have a camera? Yes, you do. Where? This? Ha 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 ha. Your camera is made of Lego blocks. Huh? Yeah. You got hold on your camera? I think so. Now, turn it back on yourself. Okay. Oh my God! Do you know what you're looking at? Oh my God, what is this? What am I? Listen to me. Oh my God, what are all those bits sticking out of me? All those holes. I look. You're a. I look so weird. Am I wearing jewelry? Nothing's working. I didn't elute one. What? You're a lost tablet. A what? Listen to me. You're an object made from Lego. From reconfigured Lego blocks. The children's toy. Architect Jan van Skyk made you. Remember, you're not the only lost tablet. Am I lost? I'm not lost. I'm here. Where am I? Melbourne, Australia, in a room. So why am I allowed one? You're named after Alouette one. No. What? Okay. Who? A decommissioned a Canadian satellite. And where are you? Oh, I'm lost in space, hanging out with your namesake and all the other floating space trash. Oh, I'm confused. 
Nice talking to you. Hey, huh? Howdy. Thank you, Dr. Con. I'd like to thank my colleagues for introducing me to this intriguing case. One must forego moral judgment on these matters, but many of you may find the case of architect Jan van Skyk somewhat, shall we say, disturbing. For the faint-hearted and squeamish, please feel free to leave the room. Very well, let's proceed. Patient was found unshaven, adrift and babbling incoherently. Initial observations of patient with toy blocks a standard psychological testing procedure, showed demonstrable preference toward Lego. An obsessiveness towards intricate detailing, though interestingly only on one side, and thematically grouped colours. Patient calls them lost tablets and names them after ghost ships. Despite an admission he felt a bit at sea, patient maintained the misapprehension that he was free and driving the exercise oblivious to being under observation at the request of family. It should be noted in the prior celebrated case of Norman Foster, the architect displayed a similar fixation with a specific type of child's building material, the Meccano set. In Vale and Vale's classic study, Architecture on the Carpet, 2013, the authors note that Meccano had particular influence on the building of, Ho of Foster's Hong Kong Shanghai Bank. Somewhat ironically, critics describe this toy-inspired building as a high-tech masterwork. One might hypothesise, Vale and Vale again, that incorporating childhood games seems evident amongst a strain of architects. Indeed, further observation of Van Skyke reveals similar latent tendencies emerging in the patient's own architecture. The articulated facades and ceilings of the new academic street at RMIT, the tessellated tiles and glazed brick in the Wattle Avenue house, and most explicitly, Scandinavian freestyle. Whether these latent tendencies are in fact regressive and infantile is hard to determine. It should be noted that some decades after Foster's Hong Kong masterwork, he built a giant gherkin. Similar surreal flourishes colour Van Skyke's work. The truncated horns in what he calls Carol A. Deering can be seen in, LG, in his LGM master plan in Malaysia. But perhaps such eccentricities are best appreciated by the British, who anointed Foster with a lordship. Oh shit, sorry. Um, <laughs> there are clear signs of an Oedipal struggle. Conversation with Van Skyke's father, a precise man, insists there was nothing in his childhood to account for these surreal outbursts and these otherwise calm exteriors. This may account for the duality in the block play. Highly detailed one side, smooth on the other. Blank versus articulated. Is the architect hiding behind a facade of his own making? Or as some observers argue, are the blocks themselves a trigger? Is the architect desperately trying to express himself from the strictures of modernism manifest by the Danish blocks? Or are these lost tablets obsession with ghost ships simply echo echoing Captain Corb, modernist architect Le Corbusier, and his fixation with ocean liners. And are they any more or less troubling? Patient claims teeth and pen marks on the blocks were inflicted by others. This blame and projection seems an obvious metaphor for the working relationship with the architect's clients. Each party attempts to maintain a grip on design and ownership. Mutiny and piracy he also heard, was heard muttering on occasion. Patient seems unable to distinguish any agency between the two. Who, one might ask, is steering the proverbial ship? Could lost tablets simply represent the frustration of too many unbuilt projects? The thin skin of the architect, metaphorically revealed in a creed occur of his own unconscious devising? Advice is to keep Mr. Van Kaskaik under close observation. Thank you. Thanks, Jan.
Thanks, Matt. I like that it's not too serious. Or I'm not sure if it is. <laughs> um, Bernice. As children, we used to play on the wall. Oh, sorry. Okay. We would press ourselves between its folds and squeeze up to the lower ledges. We whacked balls against it, diving into the dirt to catch the return. We climbed to the top, daring each other to dive off into the waves. We sat in the openings, the wind blowing across our skin. We would lie against it in the hot sun as it radiated heat onto our backs, ants crawling over our necks. Our fingers turned orange, our shirts ruined. Even as we began to tire of these games, it still exerted a pull on us, daring us to return. We went to the lake, to the spit, but somehow we would always end up back at the wall. Only then did we feel connected, powerful. The wall was always there, hovering out of sight in the back of our minds. We never stopped to think what it was or who built it. It just was. We first heard the screaming as we came over the hill. They said they would come back. You never listened. Nobody believed me. It was Bernice who lived by the bridge. She was down on her knees in the mud, begging the men to leave her as they struggled to lift her up. As we approached, they ordered us back, but we still could see they were nervous. One of them kept glancing over his shoulder at the ocean. Between the gaps in the waves, we caught a glimpse of a vessel. It appeared as a solid object, without sails or rigging. It pressed through the water, undisturbed by the swells, as though driven by some other force. Looking into the sun, at first it seemed to have no colour, but as it came closer, we could see it was orange. The wall, Bernice screamed. Prepare the wall. As the vessel drew nearer, everyone went quiet. Its front was flat, of the same dimensions as the wall. Two, shaped, two shapes protruded from this flat surface, shapes we recognised as being the same as the openings in the wall. Silently, it moved closer. We held our breath, as the water was pressed out between the surfaces. Then, with a loud click, the wall was engaged. I felt a movement deep inside my spine. At once, I felt stronger, taller. We looked at each other and stepped forward. They had returned and we knew what had to be done. Marlborough. Step, crack, line, follow. Crack, step, line, bend. Crack, move, crack, bend. Shift, line, move, up. Crack, around. Crack, bend, e, e, e. Twist, snap, crack, bend, follow the line. Crack, bend, snap. Snap, click, break. Love, crack, bend, snap, Follow the line. Move, crack, bend, crack. Move, twist, 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 twist. Crack, bend, break. Move, shift, replace. End, back, replace. Shift, crack, back, bend, crack, snap. Snap along the line. Follow, crack, snap here. Crack, crack, crack. Snap, crack, Snap, click, creak, crack, snap, lick, break, together. Flow, fit, flip, crack, snap, crack, split, together, never, forever. Jump, flow, follow. Slip, crack, stack, together. Snap, crack, twist. Add, subtract, take away, all together. Add, snap, lose, move, muse, follow away, never. Snap, crack, squeeze. Hold, crack, snap, lock together. Snap, crack, line, break. Add, subtract, move in together. Flip, add, crack, snap, lose, lost, add, forever. 
snap, crack, squeeze, hold together. Bump, lump, move, replace, crack, line, hold it all together. Smooth, break, crack, open, swap, add, take, add, crack, subtract, love, lost, forever. Snap, lost, love, in, out, crack, bump, in, over, along. Crack, snap, twist, crack, slap, add, subtract, edge, forward, together. Snack, slap, lick, crack, twist, join, crack, together. Blow, crack, slap, squeeze, squish, mould, together. Crack, swap, combine, subtract, add it all together. Move, crack, snap, slap, love, life, lost, forever. Crack, twist, Add, add, over, together. Crack, snap, slip, stack, slap it all together. Crack, slap, follow the line, forever. Snap, crack, switch, stack, crack, swap the line. Turn, move, up, on, flow, on top, never. Twist, stack, crack, step, stack. Remove, replace, retract, forever. Crack, slap, stack, on, up, never. Repeat, replace, return, line, crack, down, edge, on, up, fall, off, crack, together. Slick, slip, on, around, crash it all aside, together. Thank you very much, Shona and Rory and Ray and Nikos. It was really wonderful. Thank you, Matt, of course, and thank you, everyone, for coming. Should there be conversation arising, we'll do it off the mic because only the mic is going out live and being recorded. So thanks again and uh, please um, buy lots of books. <laughs>